Freddie Prince Jr. may as well be royalty. Tall, dark and handsome, he found fame and fortune as one of the late 90s most popular leading male heartthrobs. Then this prince found his golden princess, the gorgeous actress Sarah Michelle Gellar. They are now married and he is totally devoted to her. While it seems he is living happily ever after, it wasn't always the case. At school, he didn't fit in. He was considered a geek obsessed with reading comic books and playing video games. And he was picked on and constantly felt like an outsider. I was considered really weird and strange because I kind of like, I just did my own thing. I was act out like fantasies in my head and, and, and just pretend to be other people and kids thought I was weird strange and now people call me an actor, you know what I mean? But I'm doing like the exact same thing I was doing then, so. Freddie's childhood interest in make-believe fueled his interest in drama. So when he graduated from high school, he moved to LA and began auditioning for TV roles. At first, parts were hard to come by and Freddie questioned his decision. But he finally landed his first break, a four-lined guest spot on the TV series Family Matters. TV movies followed his dark appeal making him perfect for boyfriend and bully roles. In 1996, he scored his first film role playing alongside Michelle Pfeiffer and Claire Danes in To Gillian on Her 37th Birthday. And the fresh-faced Freddie was quite emotional and thoughtful for such a young guy. I think as long as you love somebody and, and you show that love, even if they're gone, it kind of, it keeps her spirit alive. Perhaps that's how Freddie feels about his own father, actor and comedian Freddie Prince, who suffered from depression and while on sedatives, tragically shot himself when Freddie Jr. was only 10 months old. Freddie didn't actually know the truth behind his father's death until another kid confronted him in the playground about it. Devastated, he went home and his mum told him the story was true. He was deeply affected by the news, but through child psychologists and group therapists, Freddie has learnt to cope with his grief, but his dad's passing still profoundly affects him today. So when Freddie Prince was given a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame in 2004, of course his son was there to honour him. I always get overwhelmed. When it comes time to speak about my father, Go for it. to see you guys come out and show him love, yeah. and the respect that I felt, from so many people in both, all over the country, but especially here in my home in Los Angeles and in New York City where my father was from. It's, it's hard to explain, but it brings tears to my eyes. I'm glad this could happen. I love you guys for coming out and supporting me. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. But back to Freddie Prince Jr.'s career. Hollywood was about to experience a surge in teen movies, and with his career on the rise, he was in the right place at the right time. The 1997 teen flick, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and its 1998 sequel catapulted him to superstardom and teen heartthrob status. The movie wasn't just professionally, but also personally significant, as it was on set that he met his wife-to-be, Sarah Michelle Gellar. But both were involved with other people, so it wasn't until two years later that they actually began dating. Freddie then landed his first leading role in the romantic comedy, She's All That. He melted hearts and amused audiences, and the film ended up being the surprise hit of 1999. It is a coming of age story, and it is Zach trying to deal with the fact that he has no idea what he wants to do with his life. And I, when I was 18, I felt the exact same way. I didn't know that I was gonna be an actor. You know, when it happened, it happened so fast that the next thing I knew I was in California and I was suddenly an actor. Despite all his fame and fortune, Freddie has managed to stay down to earth with no Hollywood pretense. Relaxed and comfortable, he seems he's got nothing to prove and is always himself. And the director of She's All That was quick to recognise this refreshing trait. It's his honesty as a human being and as an actor, I think, that let the audience in and let you really care about him, no matter what what he's doing throughout um, is quite remarkable. I think audiences will be, he'll be quite a revelation to them in how good an actor he actually is. Despite growing up as an insecure teenager, as an adult, Freddie had found his feet in the cutthroat and competitive world of Hollywood. He starred in 1999's Wing Commander, 2000's Boys and Girls, and 2001's Head Over Heels and Summer Catch. 
but it was his role in 2000's Down To You that proved challenging for a surprising reason. I read the script and uh, it was dangerously close to who I am as a person, the, my character Al, and uh, it was kind of a chance for me to to see if I could be myself in a movie because I've, I've never done that. I've never even come close to playing myself. When you first get there and you're working things out in rehearsals, it's kind of nerve wracking because you're putting a lot of yourself out there. And, and not that you don't put yourself in every role, but when you're putting personal things, things that everyone in the room is going to know, like, you really felt like that. That's a scary thing. In a bizarre scripting coincidence, the film revealed many of Freddie's real life quirks. He's very obsessive about, about his girlfriend, about love, about passion, about fish, about food. And these are all things that are like, I feel exactly the same about. So I had a great time. It was really fun. And it seems Freddie's co-star, Julia Stiles, enjoyed herself as much as he did. I um, had so much fun making this movie, um, the person that I obviously came in contact with the most was Freddie, and it's such a wonderful pleasure to work with him because he's such a thoughtful, serious, dedicated actor, and um, he really put his heart and soul into this role, and that just made me want to try harder. Um, but at the same time, he's a really like laid back, almost little kid, and he just really lightened up the situation, but at the same time was there for me when, when we were working together in a scene. In 2002, Freddie scored the role of Fred in the movie adaptation of Scooby-Doo. And being the comic book geek he is, he knew the role inside out. I wanted them to know how passionate I was about, about the film and uh, how serious I was. And I, I carry a Scooby-Doo bowling ball. We all, all my buddies, I mean, we bowl, we think it's cool. So I, I had the ball in my truck because you never know when you're gonna go bowling. And uh, I brought the ball inside and I was like, look, and it's not a new ball. Look how old it looks. Look at the oil on it. And I showed him and they laughed and thought it was funny. But it was his then fiance, Sarah Michelle Gellar, that he's got to thank for the role. He'd initially been afraid the film would not respect the original cartoon series, but Sarah made him see the light. He was pessimistic about it, you know. This is a cartoon that we have every episode of in the house. He knows every episode of the show and loved it so much that he's always like, well, they're gonna ruin it if they bring it to the big screen. And I was the one that read the script first and thought, you know, they did a really good job. They took Scooby and they made this into a feature film. And I said to Freddie, I'm like, Freddie, you'll be a mistake. You're, you're to be sorry if you don't read this. And I sat him down and I said, read it now. And uh, he read it that night and met with Raja on a Saturday and said, you're right, I want to do it. Clearly, Freddie is a massive fan of Scooby-Doo. So why does he think the cartoon's been so popular and lasted the test of time? It's a dog that can talk. You know what I mean? It's like everybody wishes their dog would talk back when they talk to him. And you always, like, you, you tell your dog no when he's done something bad, he just kind of gives you that look like, you don't have to blush at me, like, don't tell me what to do. And you know that he wants to say it and you just wish he would. But the role wasn't a walk in the park. Strangely enough for Freddie, one of the biggest challenges was the hairdo. The blonde hair was a little tricky. That was... I thought wearing a wig would be a pain in the butt, so I said, oh, I'm gonna, I'll bleach my hair. That makes it easy, because then I'm done. <laughs> no. Apparently my hair grows very quickly, and it's very dark and coarse and thick and doesn't hold color at all. And so every, like, eight days, I had to go through the process all over again, which only takes about six hours on your day off, and uh, get to have your scalp burned and reburned and burned again after that, and then let some color sit in there for about four and a half hours. And then when it didn't work, get to do it all over again because the first time it didn't take. So it was a little tricky and I won't, I won't make the same mistake next time. <laughs> so what was it like working alongside his fiance on set? It's an unbelievable experience. It's, uh, I know what to expect from her. I know what she's gonna bring to the table. So it gives me an opportunity to push her a little bit harder than you would normally push somebody else and vice versa. We have the opportunity to sort of make each other better. So it works out well. I've always had the utmost respect for Freddie as an actor, so working with him, is it's great and it's easy. What a team. They went on to star together in the Scooby-Doo sequel and love working together enough to do more. In the 2007 animation Happily Never After, they voiced their characters together, playing out an interesting rivalry between them. It's fun because we have, you know, we obviously have a natural chemistry or, or we wouldn't have hooked up in the first place. And uh, hopefully. And uh, so for us to be in the room, we got to do our ADR sessions together. And, you know, her character 
gives my character a hard time and doesn't take any lip. And, and Sarah is very similar in that regard, and so am I. So when they're at odds, we have a lot of fun because we know the, we know the tricks that we've played on each other, and we know when it's time to, to give one of us a hard time, and we have a lot of fun doing that. Freddie has his priorities right. He has said life is not about making money or how many movies you can make in a year. It's about finding someone that you can share things with and he says he's the luckiest man in the world to have found Sarah. And there is very little he wouldn't do for her. When she requested he didn't strip naked for a love scene in Summer Catch, he agreed and persuaded the director to give him a bottom double so that no one sees his butt beside Sarah. But they do like to kick butt together, attending martial arts training and even tap dancing classes together. And in September 2009, they became proud parents of a beautiful baby girl, Charlotte Grace Prince. And even though the pair is a high profile celebrity couple, they still appreciate the simpler things in life. What are your 4th of July weekend plans? Um, I probably just have, we're pretty mellow and we got a nice little rooftop so we can see the fireworks. We'll probably just split a bottle of wine, have a little cheese, have a little fruit, me and the wife. In 2005, Freddie was asked to present at the Creative Arts Emmy Awards. And for him, an event like this, celebrating behind the scenes achievements, was as important to him as the Emmys for all the stars. I'm very aware of, of the, the team concept of making a film. And if one person isn't pulling their weight, the project is not good. So when everyone comes together, it ends up being really special and a lot of people don't realize why. And this is, you know, an opportunity um, to just sort of show all the elements that they're going to make in a television show or a film, whatever. Assuming the role of the youngest TV executive producer in ABC's history, from 2005 to 2006, Freddie starred in his own American sitcom, the appropriately named Freddie, on which he was also co-creator and writer. The show, which was supposed to depict actual events in his own life, sadly didn't last long. His other TV pursuits have included roles on Frasier, Friends, Boston Legal and 24. So who knows where he'll pop up next. Handsome, talented and down to earth, Freddie Prince Jr. says when it comes down to it, life is simple. There are only three things that are important to him. His girl, his family and his acting. What a good guy. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels and mnc.tv. It's all together better.